We've all done it. We get to our destination and we start looking through all the stuff we brought on the trip for that one item that we desperately need at that moment. And it's sort of like looking for a needle in the haystack. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Not how to find that one thing. I, I can't help you with that. But I can help you with how to organize your gear so you can find stuff when you need it on future trips. Or as we like to say, how do we plan our trips for travel on the Can-Am Spider? For any major project such as a long duration trip, one of the first things that I do is to develop a plan. And it's a double edged sword. It's so easy to over plan and it's also so easy to under plan. So a little trial and error, this is why I recommend some practice trips if you're new to uh, Moto Touring, is find out what you need to take and what you don't need to take and just work, work it out that way. I also am a big fan of checklists. Now, I'm dyslexic, so checklists for me are sort of mandatory. And you may say, well, I don't need a checklist for a long duration trip. I can function without one. Keep in mind that astronauts use checklists, pilots use checklists, and more recently, even surgeons use checklists. They don't want to forget anything critical. And, you know, if you're traveling a long distance on an open cockpit vehicle, maybe a checklist is not a bad idea. Now, my personal system, I divide it down into two two basic categories. It is my pre-launch checklist, which is in a big binder, and then the during-trip checklist, which is in a smaller uh, binder. So anyway, my first one is the big binder, which is everything I want to pack and take with me and things I need to do in preparation. For example, I know I'm going to need to get an extra portable hard drive. Uh, this is uh, one five terabyte drive and I'm going to get an extra one so I can back all the video up in two sources so if one hard drive crashes I've still got everything on a backup hard drive so example just things I need to get things I need to pack in preparation uh, also I work out my itinerary for the trip now this trip in 2022 is a very very loose itinerary we do have uh, at the very beginning we we're meeting up with some friends in the Tennessee area, just a couple days down the road. And then halfway through the trip, we have reservations in Yosemite area. So other than that, we're going to be, uh, we even though we've picked a route, uh, we're sort of going to improvise our daily mileage and our rest days uh, using the three-in-one method. Next is the smaller checklist. And in here, I keep a checklist of everything that I want to do on a regular basis during the trip, such as the uh, maintenance I'm going to do on the spider and checks I'm going to do on the spider and trailer on a regular basis. My daily routines that would include uh, downloading the video, backing everything up, and charging all the batteries. As you can imagine, carrying, I think it's one, two, three, four video cameras, uh, and plus all the intercom systems, we have a lot of batteries to charge. Also, one of the things that we do, and I've so shown it in uh, prior videos, uh, I like to use a, uh, a bed to lay my gear out. Uh, when we travel, we will often get a room if we're getting a hotel room with two beds, so we can use one to spread our gear out on. And it's just easier to lay everything out so I can see it and pack it. Now, this happens to be our spare bedroom that we use as our studio. Uh, there's our little map screen behind us. And this, is, this is our equipment laptop, all of our electrical equipment, uh, kitchen equipment, things of that nature. Here I have uh, clothing and uh, my toiletry kit, and Miriam has hers in a smaller bag, which I'll show you in a moment, and then we'll show you how it all fits into the trailer. Now part of our packing system is to have stuff that we're going to need uh, quickly uh, and routinely up with us up front. Uh, going from left to right, we'll have the beverage bottles. Here's my cold beverage bottle. I also have a thermos for hot beverages that also fits in here. That stays in the back until I need it, then I can swap them out. 
Here's my RAM mount for my uh, cell phone, which I use to uh, uh, primarily listen to music. I Bluetooth it through my helmet. And if adverse weather, I keep a Ziploc bag up here and this little aftermarket uh, pouch system. And then I would just put it in here so if it, gets, if it starts raining, it won't get wet. Here, of course, is the GPS. And up here I will keep uh, my sunglasses, if I want to put sunglasses on when we come to a stop. Some snacks uh, for, you know, eating during the, during the ride. Some lip balm uh, and that sort of thing. Easy to access items. And of course my voice recorder that goes with me everywhere generally stays in my, uh, my riding jacket pocket. Now the Spider has 10 cubic feet of internal storage. We'll start with the trunk area or the frunk area. I'm sorry, the trunk's in the back front areas in the front. This is not the engine. Uh, I've had some people who saw me pull over on the side of the road to get an extra GoPro or battery out from the uh, front storage area and they want to know if everything was okay because I had the hood up. This is not a hood. Um, this area is uh, plenty deep. We keep our two day packs in here. We like to have day packs with us. If we want to do a hike, we carry basic stuff, first aid kit, uh, cell phone chargers and things like that in our little day packs. Also great if we just want to stroll around town, buy some souvenirs, we can throw them in the day pack, then we get back and throw the souvenirs in the trailer and put the packs back up front. So it's our it's a quick access uh, to some of the gear which we use routinely. And here we have the trunk area. Simply access it by lifting up on the handle. And all these areas are lockable uh, so you can feel that they're everything in them is pretty secure. Uh, and in here, it's plenty deep, we keep a tool kit, uh, ball caps, purse for Miriam, things like that. Uh, and I also carry my, my blogging camera, it'll go back here so we can have handy access to it. Spare set of gloves, I have a habit now of carrying two sets of gloves with me. One I'm wearing and one stays here, one's cold weather and one is warm weather because the weather keeps changing, so I find it's just easier just to carry the extra set of gloves with me. On the right side is where we keep our, our foul weather gear, uh, rain gear, uh, evaporative cooling vest, rain pants, they all stay right there. And on the far side, we keep all uh, the video gear. I keep the, uh, the large camera and the camera case, uh, the drone, and extra equipment for that. It'll go on, 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 on the, I'm sorry, the left side, on the far side on the, over there. Let's spend just a minute to talk about the trailer, the Can-Am Spider trailer. There are two generations of this trailer. The first generation, if memory serves, is a model 622. Uh, it has two access points, one in the rear, one in the front. It was the first generation of Spider trailer. Then the second one is the Freedom trailer. It only has one access, which is one large clamshell lid, which gives you access to the inside. It has hydraulic supports to hold the lid open and something that we've added extra is a uh, little battery powered LED light so if we're unloading it uh, at nighttime we can see without trying to hold a flashlight. So let's talk about how we pack this thing. When loading a trailer one of the things that we take into consideration is weight. We have the heaviest items which is my equipment pack, Miriam's suitcase, and the water which we use for either meal preparation, the cooling vest are for drinking uh, right along the axle line because that's the most weight. We also want to make sure that the weight on the tongue is about 40 pounds. Uh, that's about the maximum, but you do want to have a positive weight load on the actual tongue. If not, it could cause the trailer to have some adverse handling characteristics. Here I carry my, uh, my clothing bag, which also carries my toiletry kit. And here we have the the cooler, which we carry our perishable foods in, and over here, this empty bag is the pantry, which we carry our uh, non-perishable food stuffs, food stuffs in. And you still see we have plenty of room for extra gear. And typically, we will carry the folding collapsible chairs up front in the front part of the trailer, which which still gives us plenty of room. One of the downsides of having 20 cubic feet of storage space in the Freedom trailer is. 
it's hard to keep all that space organized. You can find stuff quickly and easily when you need it without cursing to yourself under your breath, trying to find that random item that you need desperately at that particular moment. So one of the systems that I've developed, and it seems to work for me, I, as we showed earlier, we divide things up into, into groups. But we divide those groups even into smaller groups. Now, I have a, a packing system that I use. This is a, a backpack that's designed not necessarily for backpacking, but it does have the backpack straps. So you can carry it into the hotel room uh, easily or around wherever you're going to go. And it's a military-style pack. And this particular brand is uh, 511, but there are other companies that make uh, similar packs. And what I like about this pack is that when you unzip it, it has multiple areas of storage and organization. So I can just keep things in the same place all the time. This outer pouch has one, two, three, four, four pockets. And I'm always finding things that I didn't know I had. Look. Tabasco. Didn't know that was even in there because it's been a little while since we used this for a trip. Then we have the top pouches. Uh, there are two of these, one on each side, and you, they are subdivided into two other uh, small compartments for small, easy to reach things. Then the main compartment, which has separate compartments in the main compartment, and then in the, the actual main storage area of the pack. I keep things segregated into storage bags. This is the electrical bag. This is all the electrical equipment that we need to keep everything charged and running. This is the kitchen bag. All the kitchen equipment that we need goes in here. And the only thing I have separate is the uh, Hydro Flask uh, water bottle. And then the laptop is in a compartment uh, down here by itself. And that's the way we do pretty much everything when it comes to organization. Uh, in the clothing bag, I have my toiletry kit in one giant Ziploc bag. I like the Ziploc bag because I can see everything that's in the bag that I need to reach to. Uh, things such as my contact lenses, contact lens solution, contact lens tray, I keep uh, separated into a, even a smaller bag. So it's very easy to find what I need when I need it. I mentioned earlier we we're going to talk a little bit about the tools I carry in my toolkit. But first of all, I want to disclose I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a spider technician. I'm a guy that is comfortable in turning a wrench or turning a screwdriver. And if given enough time, I can figure out how to fix most things. It's not the same as being a certified mechanic or a certified spider technician. Which is why the most important thing I carry on trips in case we have a spider mechanical is this. It's my roadside assistance program through my spider insurance company that in the event I have a mechanical problem, they I can give them a call. They will sit in the nearest tow truck. They will figure out who the closest tow truck is to me that can handle the spider. And then they will pay to take it to the nearest spider repair facility. Uh, that way, the appropriately trained people can actually address the issue and get it done. Will it cost more money than me fixing it? Probably. But if I'm on the side of the road, I don't have the access to my entire garage and I don't have the time uh, and the luxury of, of my garage to work on it. So I'd rather have those folks do it. Now, what do I actually carry in my tool kit? It's pretty small and compact and I really designed it to address the most likely and simplest to fix issues uh, I may run across. Um, I carry a set of extra fuses. I carry a tire repair kit, patch kit that is, uh, complete with the plugs and the adhesives to seal it up. I also carry a can of Fix-A-Flat. I know mechanics hate this stuff, but if I'm on the side of the road with a flat tire, I'm going to use it. And then I carry a small compressor. One of the things I've done with the compressor is I have taken off the cigarette lighter adapter uh, that where it plugs into. And I have installed a plug that would actually fit into the pigtail coming right off the battery. I found this draws more amperage than the cigarette lighter in the trunk uh, would, would pop, pop, the, uh, and pop the fuse. I plug this directly into the battery and I got enough power to uh, pump up uh, any tire. I carry a lug wrench just to make sure the lugs are tightened. 
and always carry a few nylon ties, some electrical tape, some duct tape, and the BRP Spider Toolkit. Now, the only thing I've added to this toolkit uh, are the extra uh, wrenches that I would need in the unlikely event that I have the parking brake malfunction, which apparently is something that happens occasionally that could leave you stuck. So I can actually disassemble and work on the uh, the parking brake. And I put a, a Leatherman uh, tool in a Leatherman type tool in my kit. Now, one of the last categories we need to talk about is a general packing philosophy. Now, for us, we try to pack for about three nights or four days. Nothing more when it comes to uh, consumables or clothing. And I like to be able to pack everything into a stuff sack about this size for all my clothing. Uh, basic uh, outerwear, uh, undergarments, uh, extra clothing we're going to need for, uh, for warmer weather, and that sort of thing. And how can we pack this small? Well, we only pack for four days, three nights or four days, and we do laundry. And one of the products we carry with us is, well not, this is not a paid advertisement, but it's Camp Suds is the brand name. You can pick it up at any outdoor outfitter, and we use that. You could use it to take a bath, wash your hair, uh, do laundry, wash dishes, and we try to pack synthetic garments that we can generally wash out in the bathroom sink in the hotel and hang over the, uh, the shower curtain rod and that will generally dry overnight. We generally do laundry and go shopping about every fourth day and that keeps the amount of stuff we have to carry down to a minimum. Well that's pretty much going to wrap up today's video. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or anything that you would, would like to see in future videos explained in more detail or other topics, uh, on the subject of traveling on the spider, or just traveling in general, feel free to leave in the comments below. Uh, it always gives us uh, incentives and ideas for uh, future topics and know what the audience wants to see. So, in the meantime, again, thanks for watching. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.